Hey everybody, Chris here from O'Reilly Auto Parts to show you how to change brake pads and rotors on an early 2000s GMC or Chevy pickup. Before I get into that, take a second to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Today I'll be installing brake best select pads and rotors on this 2004 GMC Sierra, and the procedure will be similar on many early 2000s GM trucks. But be sure to know the specifics for your truck before getting started. If you're not completely comfortable doing this yourself, we'd be happy to recommend a professional technician in your area. Once you've got your supplies together, here's what you'll do. Park on a level surface. Carefully remove the plastic caps on your lug nuts with a 21 millimeter socket if your truck has them. Then loosen the lug nuts on the front wheels with your 22 millimeter socket. Jack up the front end and put it on stands. Remove the lug nuts and wheel. Remove the two caliper slide bolts with a T55 socket and breaker bar. Slide out the two caliper slide bolts. Take the caliper off the rotor. And use your caliper hanger to secure it out of the way without putting any pressure on the brake line. Now you should be able to remove the old brake pads. Remove the two caliper mounting bracket bolts with an 18 millimeter socket. Take the mounting bracket off and set it aside. Spray penetrating oil where the rotor slides onto the bolts if it's difficult to remove. Remove the rotor from the hub. You can use a hammer to loosen it if the rotor will be replaced or two long M10 bolts threaded into the smaller holes on the rotor to force it off the hub. Clean any rust off the hub with a wire brush. Adding silicone brake grease to the hub before installing your new rotor will make it easier to remove when it's time to change it again. Use brake cleaner and a rag or shop towel to wipe down both sides of your new rotor. Anytime you use brake cleaner, remember that it will strip paint, including painted hats on your rotors. So be very careful when you spray it. Install the rotor and use a lug nut to hold it in place while you continue to work. Clean the brake caliper bracket with a brake cleaner where the brake pad hardware clips and brake pads will sit. Inspect the caliper bracket for rust before reinstalling it. If it's rusty where the pads or the brake hardware ride, it needs to be replaced. You can clean the caliper bracket with brake cleaner, but don't use a steel brush on it. Reattach the caliper mounting bracket with the two 18 millimeter bolts. Torque the bolts to 120 foot pounds. Lubricate the contact points on the new brake pads with 100% silicone grease and put them into place on the caliper mounting bracket. Clean the caliper slide bolts and holes with brake cleaner. Clean the exposed portion of your caliper piston with brake cleaner on a towel or rag. If the rubber boot is cracked or if there's brake fluid leaking, the caliper needs to be replaced. Compress the brake caliper with a C-clamp or brake caliper compressor tool. Use an old brake pad to protect the pistons. When you're done, the piston should be flush with the housing. Apply silicone grease to the caliper slide bolts as well. Reinstall the two caliper slide bolts using your 18 millimeter socket or T55, then torque them to 90 foot pounds.
Now it's safe to remove the lug nut you used to keep the rotor in place while you were working and the caliper hanger from the wheel well. It's almost always a good idea to change pads and rotors in pairs, so repeat these steps on the other side. Straighten the steering wheel and put the wheels back on. Tighten the lug nut so the wheels are flush against the rotors. Lower the vehicle and use your 22 millimeter socket to tighten the lug nuts in a star pattern. Torque them to 120 foot-pounds. Once the job is complete, before you drive anywhere, be sure to pump your brakes several times until you feel pressure return. It should feel the way it did before the brake job. Some brake fluid was pushed out when you compressed your pistons, so check your master cylinder and add fluid as needed. If your brake pedal does feel spongy, you probably have air in one or both of your front brake lines. Here's a link to a video on how to bleed those lines to remove the air. To help break in the new components, it's a good idea to test drive your vehicle, slowing it 30 times from 30 miles per hour with moderate brake pressure, allowing the brakes to cool for about 30 seconds in between each slowdown. Try to avoid aggressive stops during this break-in process. Your brakes will probably smell after you've done this, and that's okay. If the odor persists past 500 miles or so, or if you have excessive dust on one wheel, you may have a stuck caliper. If you're replacing your pads with brake best pads, the box has a brake pad wear chart for reference. The chart shows the possible causes for abnormal wear that may need to be addressed. And that's it. You'll find everything that you need for this and other jobs at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Our DIY videos are designed to help answer questions we get in our stores every day. If you found this one helpful, subscribe to our channel to get all the latest. We'll see you again soon.